If you haven't watched any of the Star Wars animated series, but you're still curious of the stories, don't worry. I'm here to help. You're welcome. Not that I'm a know-it-all or anything. I really don't think there's a Star Wars fan who knows everything about Star Wars. Yeah, not even Dave Filoni. Probably not even George Lucas at this point, but that isn't saying anything bad about them. There were a ton of stories written outside their own expertise. That's why there's an entire Star Wars story group. Their job is to make sure stories stick to a certain canon and be a resource to stories in the past, including the expanded universe of yesteryear. Anyways, if you don't know much about the animated series Star Wars Rebels, I can help a bit. In that series, there were some new concepts added to the Star Wars mythos, the Bendu and the Force-sensitive wolves, for example. One of those concepts was the World Between Worlds. Embedded within the Jedi Temple on Ezra Bridger's home planet of Lothal, the World Between Worlds was a place for Jedi to learn, a place where they could hear and sometimes see and interact with Jedi in events of the past, present, and future. But what was the world between worlds meant to be? Why does it even exist if Jedi with access to it could change the course of history, yet they haven't used it to change their own fates? Obviously, Yoda knows of this place. He actually visits Ezra Bridger in Lothal's Jedi Temple, albeit as a type of apparition. But Yoda knows of it and didn't go back in time to stop Palpatine as a senator before he was the most powerful politician in the galaxy, starting wars to distract the Jedi and the galaxy from seeing what he was really up to. Why didn't Yoda change it? Well, that's what I'll be talking about today. And yes, I have an answer. And when we're done here, so will you. And be sure to stick around because at the end I'll be showing an interview that backs up my thoughts on this. Before I go on with the world between worlds and what it means for the past, future, and present of Star Wars, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and give the video a big stupid thumbs up. It really does help get my message across the Star Wars fandom. If you subscribe and like the video, it will also give you a sense of happiness and euphoria unlike anything you've ever experienced. It'll make your family love you more and your water will turn to beer. Yeah, beer. If you don't subscribe and like, I'm sure your family will still like you just fine and water will be good enough for you. Now, let's get back to the world between worlds. While an astute Star Wars scholar could say the world between worlds was manifesting itself in episodes that introduced the Jedi Temple on Lothal, the actual gateway wasn't presented until Season 4, Episode 13 in the aptly titled World Between Worlds. This idea that there existed a plane that defied the laws of time and space was brought to the brilliant mind of George Lucas by the Star Wars Rebels creator, Dave Filoni. In other words, Dave Filoni consulted George Lucas on it, and there was much rejoicing in the Star Wars fandom. And there was much rejoicing. When The World Between Worlds was first shown to us in 2018, a lot of Star Wars fans were excited. The Last Jedi had just been released two months prior, and many people wanted this option as a way of changing what the Star Wars sequel trilogy was bringing to us. And many Star Wars fans still do want that. But what is the true purpose of the world between worlds? Well, it isn't meant to be a means of changing the past, present, nor future. The simple answer is knowledge. But is that the whole answer? Well, let's take a look. When Ezra Bridger is launched onto his face in the world between worlds, he hears the voices of Jedi and other important characters from the Skywalker saga. Among them are Yoda, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ahsoka Tano, and Rey. Ezra recognizes Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, but he doesn't understand the context of what they're saying, and he doesn't understand where he is. That is, until he happens upon a portal that he does recognize. One where he sees, backward in time, where Ahsoka Tano is fighting Darth Vader on Malachor. Just as Darth Vader is ready to defeat Anakin Skywalker's former Padawan, in a panic, Ezra Bridger reaches in and pulls Ahsoka Tano from her fate. But Ahsoka tells Ezra that it isn't right. That she doesn't belong in his time. But Ezra sees another portal. A portal that shows him Kanan Jarrus' sacrifice. His former master is about to be killed in a fuel depot explosion in order to buy time for Ezra and the Ghost's crew to escape to safety. Ezra now knows he can alter the past and wants to reach in and save Kanan from his fiery fate. Yet Ahsoka tells him that doing so will mean breaking the present, a present where Ezra and those he loves will have died in that explosion if Kanan weren't there to protect them. 
thus leading to Ezra not being in the world between worlds to pull Canaan out. But it was Ahsoka with the wisdom to know that changing anything would break everything. If Ezra had pulled Kanan into the new timeline, not only would have the entire ghost crew suffered the same fate, but all of Lothal would have remained under Imperial control, Thrawn would have remained in the fight against the Rebellion, and Governor Price would have remained in control of Lothal, and for her victory may have even been promoted to a higher rank. That last bit of speculation, but you get the point. When all was said and done, the gateway to the world between worlds was closed and the Jedi Temple on Lothal was destroyed, stopping anyone from entering it. But where did it come from? Who built it and why? That's a much deeper conversation, but we have seen similar designs all the way back to the Clone Wars and the video game Jedi Fallen Order. In the Mortis arc of the Clone Wars, we see Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Ahsoka Tano called to a location that didn't exist on maps. When they arrive, they are pulled into a place called Mortis, a self-contained ecosystem within a structure that resembles a mirrored pyramid. But the design is familiar. It's much like the aesthetic used by the Zepho in Jedi Fallen Order and the same aesthetic of the World Between Worlds. We see the design again in the Bad Batch Season 2. So yes, the Zepho and the Gods of Mortis, or simply the Ones, are a big part of the Force. The three gods being the balance in the Force that has always existed, until the sun kills the daughter and the balance shifts to the dark side. Then Ahsoka unknowingly becomes the embodiment of the light side. The Zepho, first introduced in Fallen Order, are beings who first discovered the Force. Its discovery what caused the downfall of their civilization. Then, the world between worlds becomes the place where the Force exists all at once. Every time period is here. Time doesn't exist in the linear form that we know it. Everything takes place all at once at the same time, possibly built by the Zepho thousands of years prior to Star Wars Rebels. With the Ahsoka series set to release in August of this year, a lot of Star Wars fans are hoping this world between worlds will come into play once again, as the Ahsoka series looks to be a live-action continuation of Star Wars Rebels. However, I wouldn't bank on the world between worlds showing up again. As I said, it was destroyed, but that doesn't mean there aren't other gateways throughout the galaxy, though. But the message was very clear during Rebels Season 4 that the world between worlds is dangerous and should not be used to alter events in the timeline. So, love the sequel trilogy or hate it, it isn't going to change. The world between worlds was meant as a place for gaining knowledge, a way to peer into time to learn from mistakes and accomplishments, to learn from them and better oneself as a Jedi. Ahsoka Tano knew that pulling her from her timeline and placing her into the post malachor timeline was a mistake, so she went back into her original timeline. This is also why Master Yoda never used it to interfere with what had transpired during Palpatine's takeover. For him to do that would have unintended consequences, though I don't see how eliminating Palpatine before his rise would be a bad thing but it does mean something horrible for the Star Wars fandom. Imagine if Yoda did go back and change history. Everything we have come to love about the original trilogy and the prequels would now be null and void. It could only exist in a separate timeline, but the timeline we would be watching from that moment on would be so much different than what we know and love. And don't worry, another villain would appear and try the same thing. Seriously, some character would be pissed off about the ancient battle between the Jedi and the Sith on Malachor and want revenge. We'll call that character Darth Ralph. Yeah, Ralph. But it just wouldn't be the same. We wouldn't have the same stories. With all that said, the world between worlds was never meant to be a place where history could be altered. Yes, it had that capability, but only Jedi who were wise would know not to mess with it. Case in point, Ahsoka Tano versus Ezra, Ezra Bridger. Ezra not being wise enough to understand its purpose, but he learned 
and he closed that portal. The secret that was the world between worlds has been guarded by the Jedi, hence the reason it took so many puzzles to enter. However, the Empire was close to discovering it. Had it not been destroyed, Emperor Palpatine would have used it for his own evil plans. <laughs> so let's hope another one doesn't exist. It becomes bad precedent to change a story. It may help some stories, but it will hurt others. And that's the point they were trying to make with the world between worlds. But what do you think? Should the world between worlds be used in other forms? Should there be more of them out there? Surely they didn't build one in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. That would be far too risky, especially since the Jedi Temple was built on the ruins of a former Sith Temple. But let me know in the comments what you think. I do try to read all comments and respond to as many as I can. Just be respectful and I'll do the same. And before I go, if you're new here or just haven't committed yet, hit that subscribe button and give the video a big ass thumbs up. Doing so helps my channel more than you know, and it'll give you a sense of calm and happiness unlike anything you've experienced in the Star Wars fandom. Warning, subscribing to this channel will not make your family love you more unless you experience that happiness mentioned. Then your family will see a change in you and be more willing to let you collect more Star Wars stuff. Subscribing will also not turn your water to beer unless somehow this channel is the key ingredient to making your beer in your personal microbrewery. But maybe it will help due to the happiness factor. But just in case, subscribe anyway. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. Until the next video, this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching, and remember, this is the way, and positivity in the Star Wars community should be the only way. And now, a message from Dave Filoni about the world between worlds. The world between worlds, then, you know, it's not about time travel. It's really not about time travel at all. It's just about a place where everything comes together and you hear different things echoing throughout time. This is our most desperate hour. Because it's all fluid in that moment, in that place. It's not this material thing that's linear. Everything is occurring all the time. And Ezra is more in tune with the things that are directly related to him, like when he was on Malachor and saw Ahsoka like when he saw Kanan die. These things reverberate to him and he understands them more. The other voices he doesn't even understand. He doesn't know those people. Hello? Master Yoda? Obi-Wan? They're just like the wind moving and he recognizes some like Obi-Wan and Yoda, but he doesn't understand the context of anything that's going on. I don't know how real it actually is. I don't want to define that for people anyway, but it's not this place of gateways and doorways that you just go in and out of. Now Ezra can pull Ahsoka into that world, but remember she's smart enough to know that she can't leave that world through his door. She'll be destroying the natural balance and order of things. She has to go back from where she came. It's the same with Kanan. I can reach him. Ezra, Kanan gave his life so that you could live. When you understand that, if he pulls him out of that world, he. He's got to put him back in a world where everybody's dead. And then you know that, wait, Ezra couldn't have even been in that world then. And so everything will break and will cause chaos and will cause destruction. So it's not this system of doorways, like you're on an elevator getting off on different floors in different times. It's more like what the wolf tells Ezra. It's more about knowledge. Knowledge that you can use for your benefit of good or knowledge that will lead to destruction. That's what it's about. But it, it's not my intention that it be this ability to walk through into somebody else's world. We have to keep being dedicated to being original and creative and sometimes we take chances and sometimes we do weird things like Crepe Bendu or you know, Mysterious Wolves. And, but I think as long as you work off the principles of the force that George set up, that it, it doesn't change it and you don't erode what makes Star Wars special.